from the central government, there will be a ban on free movement on India-Myanmar border. Steps taken to stop infiltration. Ram Temple inaugurated in Ayodhya. Its height is approximately 161 feet. This temple is built in Nagar style. First indigenous vaccine for hepatitis A launched. This vaccine made by Indian Immunologicals Limited. Named Heavy Sure. Central government advocates GM mustard environmental approval given to DMH11 variety. This variety will be beneficial in production of edible oil. And state startup ranking 2022 released. Tamil Nadu becomes best performing state. Kerala, Gujarat also included in top five. Recently, Union Home Minister Amit Shah made a big announcement regarding the India-Myanmar border. The Home Minister has announced fencing along the entire length of the India-Myanmar border. This announcement has been made to stop the free movement of people in this area. It is noteworthy that India and Myanmar share a border of about 1,643 kilometers long, which passes through states like Manipur, Mizoram, Assam, Nagaland, and Arunachal Pradesh. In fact, the border between India and Myanmar was demarcated by the British in the year 1826. This borderline effectively divided people of the same ethnicity and culture into two countries without their consent. The region has a long history of cross-border trade through customs and border hearts. Presently, the India-Myanmar border reflects the line drawn by the British. At present, the FMR, that is Free Movement Regime, agreements is in force between the two countries. Strong ethnic and family ties across the border are cited as the reason behind implementing FMR. However, in the last few years, illegal immigrants have been entering India through the border area. To stop this, it has been decided to erect fencing along the entire length of the border between the two countries. Let us tell you that free movement regime agreement was implemented in the year 2018 as a part of India's Act East policy. FMR is a mutually agreed arrangement between India and Myanmar. Under this, tribes living on the border on both sides are allowed to travel up to 16 km inside the other country without a visa. Recently, CCPA, that is Central Consumer Protection Authority, has issued a notice to an e-commerce company. The CCPA believes that the e-commerce company is engaged in deceptive trade practices involving the sale of sweets under the guise of prasad. In such a situation, CCPA has sought a reply from the company within seven days of the issue of notice. In case of non-compliance, necessary action may be initiated against them under the provisions of the Consumer Protection Act 2019. Let us tell you that the Central Consumer Protection Authority was formed in the year 2020. It has been constituted under the Consumer Protection Act 2019. It works under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. Its objective is to promote and protect the rights of consumers. It consists of a chief commissioner and two other commissioners as members. One of these deals with matters related to goods and other deals with services. This authority investigates violations of consumer rights. It mandates recall of unsafe goods and services along with filing of complaints and prosecution. Along with this, it also orders to stop unfair trade practices and misleading advertisements and impose fine. For your information let us tell you that the Consumer Protection Act 2019 is a consumer protection law passed by the Government of India. It was passed in the year 2019 to protect the interest of the consumers of the country and to prevent fraud. This act has become effective from July 20, 2020. These days FCRA that is Foreign Contribution Regulation Act remains the center of discussion. Recently some NGOs were deregistered under the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010. Let us tell you that FCRA was enacted in 1976. The Union Ministry of Home Affairs monitors the implementation of the FCRA. Under this law foreign donations to individuals and associations are regulated. Many changes were made in this act with time. In 2010 a revised FCRA was enacted to strengthen the law on the use of foreign funds and to prohibit any activity prejudicial to the national interest. 
In the series of reforms, the law was amended again in the year 2020, in which non-governmental organizations were included in the scope of this law. Under this, a provision was made to control and check the receipt and use of foreign funds by NGOs. According to the amendment made in the year 2020, FCRA registration will be valid for five years, after which the NGO will have to apply for renewal. It is mandatory for all NGOs to register under FCRA. Registered groups can receive foreign contributions for social, educational, religious, economic and cultural programs. However, this act excludes certain categories from the ambit of foreign grants. This includes candidates for election journalists and media broadcasting companies, judges and civil servants, members of the legislature and political parties, and organizations of a political nature. Recently, a grand ceremony of consecration was held at Ram Temple in Ayodhya. The temple has been designed by Chandrakant Sompura and his son Ashish in Nagar style. If we talk about the speciality of the temple, its height is about 161 feet. This temple is built entirely of stone. No steel or iron has been used in it. This temple built in the Nagar style is capable of withstanding the strong tremors of the earthquake. There are five different pavilions in this temple. This includes dance, color, assembly, kirtan and prayer pavilion. According to experts, the foundation of the temple is about 40 feet deep. Along with this, the Makarana marble, pink sandstone, granite stone and colored marble have been used for the construction of the temple, which was once used for the construction of historical buildings like Ashok Pillar and Red Fort. It is believed that this temple will not need any repair for about 1000 years. Along with this, a time capsule has also been kept 2000 feet below the temple that contains a copper plate inscribed with relevant information about Lord Ram and Ayodhya. The purpose of keeping the time capsule is to provide information about the identity of the temple to the upcoming generations. Let us tell you that Nagar style developed in India during the 5th century. This style is very popular in the areas around Malwa, Rajputana and Kalinga. In this style, the Garb Grihi, that is Sanctum Sectorum is always located just below the highest peak. An Amalka Kalash is also installed on the peak. In history, many temples have been built in the Nagar style. This includes the Jagannath Temple in Odisha and Kandariya Mahadev Temple in Khajuraho. Recently, the Ministry of Finance announced that the interim budget for the financial year 2024-25 will be presented on 1st February. The interim budget this year is expected to change income tax rates for those at the bottom of the taxpayer pyramid. Also, to promote the new income tax regime, there is a possibility of an increase in standard deduction along with a higher exemption limit. However, due to the Lok Sabha elections in April-May, the full budget is likely to be presented in July. It is noteworthy that income tax is a tax imposed on the annual income of a person or business earned in the financial year. It is governed by the Income Tax Act 1961 in India. At the same time, this tax is levied on the annual income of the taxpayer every year according to the recommended slab. The Government of India can also amend the Income Tax Act as per the need. Let us tell you that the interim budget is a temporary financial statement presented by the Government of India before the general elections. It covers the expenses and revenues of the government for a short period. This is for the period until a new government is formed. At the same time, it presents the details of estimated expenditure and revenue for the upcoming financial year. It is presented in the parliament for approval. The tradition began in the 1860s when officials of the East India Company introduced it in India. Recently, the Government of India has once again supported GM, that is genetically modified mustard. The government has defended GM mustard in the Supreme Court, saying it is in the national interest and public interest. At the same time, the government believes that this will ensure the availability of quality and cheap edible oil to the common man. At the same time, foreign dependence will also be reduced. However, the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee has granted environmental clearance for the release of the genetically modified version of mustard, DMH-11. In such a situation, if it gets approval for commercial cultivation, it will be the first genetically modified food crop available to farmers. However, before this, India has approved commercial cultivation of only one GM crop, BT cotton. Let us tell you that genetic modified mustard DMH-11, that is Dhara Mustard Hybrid 11, is an indigenously developed transgenic mustard. It is a genetically modified version of herbicide tolerant mustard. It is the result of hybridization between the Indian mustard variety Varun and the Eastern European 
early hira to mustard it includes two alien genes barnes and burstar these genes are segregate from a soil bacterium called bacillus amylolic faciens which are helpful in developing high yielding commercial mustard hybrid varieties it is noteworthy that mustard is one of the most important winter crops of india its sowing is usually done between october and november in india indian mustard brassica ginsia is a member of the brassica ca family it is cultivated in rajasthan haryana punjab and madhya pradesh for more information let us tell you that gm crops are developed to bring a new quality in the plant for this the dna of the plant is modified using genetic engineering it can be grown as food or non food crops Recently Japan's slim spacecraft has successfully landed on the surface of the moon. With this achievement Japan has become the fifth country to land on the moon. So far only the Soviet Union, the United States, China and India have achieved this feat. However, scientists believe that the solar panel of Japan's spacecraft is not working properly. In such a situation scientists are speculating that its activity on the moon may decrease. Let us tell you that slim that is smart lander for investigation moon was launched in the year 2023. It was launched by Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency that is JAXA. Another name of SLIM is Moon Sniper. It was launched by a Mitsubishi Heavy H2A rocket. The mission is aimed at reviving Japan's space program. It weighs around 590 kg, which is much lighter than Chandrayaan-3. The spacecraft will study the moon's surface temperature, radiation and potentially the moon's mantle. It carried two small rovers, LEV-1 and LEV-2, which were released just before landing. The LEV-1 rover is equipped with an antenna and a camera that will record the landing of the SLIM. The LEV-2 rover has a ball-shaped rover equipped with two cameras that will assist in the study of the moon. For more information, let us tell you that Chandrayaan-3 is a lunar mission of India. It was launched on July 14, 2023 from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. It had a successful landing near the moon's south pole on August 23, 2023. It consists of a propulsion module, a lander module and a rover module. It aims to develop new technologies required for interplanetary missions. Recently, Indian Immunologicals Limited has launched India's first indigenously developed hepatitis A vaccine, Havisho. It is a double dose vaccine, the first dose of which will be given to children above 12 months of age, while the second dose will be given at least 6 months after the first dose. This vaccine is recommended for use in children and areas with high hepatitis A prevalence. Let us tell you that Indian Immunologicals Limited is a wholly owned vaccine manufacturing company of the National Dairy Development Board. It is noteworthy that hepatitis A is a liver disease. This disease is caused by the virus hepatitis A. It is also spread through contaminated food and water or direct contact with an infected person. Its infection can be acute short-term infection or a long-term infection. There are many types of hepatitis viruses including A, B, C, D and E. These include hepatitis B, hepatitis C and hepatitis D which spread through contact with the blood of a person suffering from this disease. Its symptoms include fever, malaise, loss of appetite, diarrhea, nausea, stomach problems and jaundice. A safe and effective vaccine is available to prevent hepatitis. At the same time, better hygiene and food safety are the most effective ways to deal with hepatitis. Let us tell you that World Hepatitis Day is celebrated every year on 28th July. It unifies the world on a unified theme to raise awareness of the global burden of viral hepatitis and drive real change. This day is celebrated in the memory of the birthday of scientist Dr. Baruch Bloomberg, who discovered the hepatitis B virus and developed diagnostic tests and vaccines for the virus. It is noteworthy that the global goal is to eliminate viral hepatitis as a public health threat by 2030. Recently the central government has amended its rules related to wildlife trade after 4 decades. This is the first amendment after 1983. Under this some species have now been excluded from the licensing process for wildlife trade. In fact the government has issued fresh guidelines under the wildlife protection licensing additional matters for consideration rules 2024. The government has introduced new guidelines for licensing stakeholders involved in snake venom, captive animals, trophy animals and stuffed animals. It is noteworthy that under the rules of 1983 there was a ban on issuing licenses for the trade of some wild animals. This included wild animals classified in schedule 1 and part 2 of the schedule 2 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Let us tell you that the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 is an act for the protection of plant and animal species. 
This act makes legal provisions for the protection of wildlife, the regulation of hunting. Also controls illegal trade of wildlife and their substances. This act contains six schedules. Schedule 1 includes the endangered species that need the most protection. At the same time, special protection has been given to the organisms included in Schedule 2, which also includes restrictions on their trade. While Schedule 3 and 4 relate to those species which are not endangered. Also, Schedule 5 includes organisms that can be hunted independently. Schedule 6 regulates the cultivation of a certain plant and also prohibits its possession, sale and transit. Recently, the State Startup Ranking 2022 was released. This is the fourth edition of the State Startup Ranking this year. According to this ranking, Tamil Nadu has joined the category of five best performing states. Gujarat, Karnataka, Kerala and Himachal Pradesh are the other recognized states under this top category. These are the best performing leading states in the model startup ecosystem that set a benchmark for other states. Let us tell you that Tamil Nadu was placed in the lowest category of emerging ecosystem in its first two editions. At the same time, it was recognized as a leader in the third edition. It is noteworthy that state startup ranking framework is a periodic capacity building process which evaluates states and union territories based on the efforts made for startup development. It was started in the year 2018. It is released by the DPIIT, that is Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Its objective is to create a strong startup ecosystem in the country. This creates a conducive ecosystem for startup growth. Along with this, it tracks the efforts of the states in developing policies and building the ecosystem. Let us tell you that startup refers to the initial stage of starting a company. The Government of India started the Startup India Initiative in 2016 to promote the startup culture. This initiative creates a strong and inclusive ecosystem for innovation and entrepreneurship in India. Let us tell you that DPIIT is an office under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry of the Government of India. It was established in the year 1995. After that, the Industrial Development Department was merged into it. This department focuses on national priorities and socio-economic objectives. It is also responsible for promoting the development of the industrial sector. After the news, now let's take a look at five questions related to the bulletin. Questions based on today's bulletin are, first question is, consider the following statements. 1. Free movement regime is in force on the India-Myanmar border. 2. India-Myanmar border passes only through Assam and Tripura. 3. Free movement regime was implemented between India and Myanmar in 2018. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is, consider the following statements with reference to Nagar style. 1. This style started in the 7th century. 2. In Nagar style and Amalka is installed on the top of the temple. 3. Ram temple built in Ayodhya is built in Nagar style. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is consider the following statements with reference to interim budget. 1. It is a provisional financial statement presented by the government of India before the general elections. 2. The budget is valid for the entire year. 3. It was first introduced in India by the officials of the East India Company. How many of the above statements are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is, consider the following statements with reference to Smart Lender for Investigation Moon Mission. 1. This is the world's largest moon mission so far. 2. It has been launched by Japan. 3. The moon will be studied through this mission. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Last question is consider the following statements with reference to state's startup ranking 2022. One, this report was started in the year 2015. Two, this ranking is released by the Ministry of Finance. Three, Kerala has secured first position in state's startup ranking 2022. How many of the above statements are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Recently, a joint exercise Khanjar started between India and Kyrgyzstan. This is the 11th edition of the exercise between the two countries. The exercise is being conducted at Bakloho, Himachal Pradesh from 22nd January to 3rd February 2024. The exercise aims to exchange experiences and best practices in counter-terrorism and special forces operations in the built-up area and mountainous terrain under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. 
The exercise will focus on developing special forces skills, advanced techniques of insertion and extraction. Recently, the foundation stone of the first Ayush Diksha Center was laid. The project was launched by Union Minister of Ayush and Ports, Shipping and Waterways. The state-of-the-art center will be developed on the campus of Central Ayurveda Research Institute, Bhuvaneshwar. The center will enable Ayush professionals to hone their skills and enhance their proficiency in providing world-class patient care services to the people of the country. It will also prove to be a catalyst for the powerful Ayush movement and global movement towards a healthy and happy life experience. Scientists at Oxford University have launched the first in-human vaccine trial for Nipah virus. The trials of the CHADOX1 Nipah B vaccine will be led by the Oxford Vaccine Group, in which 51 people in the age group of 18 to 55 years will be included. It is noteworthy that Nipah virus is a devastating disease that can be fatal in about 75% of the cases. Many countries in Asia, including India, Singapore, Malaysia, Bangladesh have been affected by this virus. Indian stock markets have been rising in recent weeks. According to a Bloomberg report, the Indian stock market has overtaken Hong Kong to become the fourth highest equity market globally. According to the data, the Sensex and Nifty registered a growth of 17-18% to 18 on a cumulative basis in 2023. Let us know that world's top three stock markets are the United States, China and Japan. Recently, Subhash Chandra Bose Aapada Prabandhan Puraskar was announced. In the year 2024, this award was given to 60 parachute field hospitals of Uttar Pradesh. It is noteworthy that this group had provided medical aid during the 7.8 magnitude earthquake in Turkey and Syria last year. For this excellent work, it has been selected for the Subhash Chandra Bose Disaster Management Award 2024. Let us tell you that Subhash Chandra Bose Disaster Management Award is announced every year on 23rd January on the birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose for excellence in disaster management. Recently, Pradhan Matri Suryodaya Yojana has been announced. Through this scheme, solar panels will be installed on the rooftops of 1 crore which will provide electricity to people's home by charging them in sunlight. However, no clear guidelines have been issued regarding who will be the beneficiaries of this scheme. Recently, the central government has announced to give the country's highest civilian honour Bharat Ratna Award to Karpuri Thakur. The announcement was made on the occasion of 100th birth anniversary of Karpuri Thakur on January 24. Let us know that Karpuri Thakur has been identified as a freedom fighter, teacher and politician. He served as the Chief Minister of Bihar twice and was also the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar. He was called the People's Hero because of his popularity. Recently, the Department of Science and Technology has announced the first batch of Webhoff Fellow. The scheme is aimed at attracting overseas scientists of Indian origin for short-term collaborations. Scientists selected in this fellowship will be provided an assistance amount of Rs 4 lakh per month. The Webhoff Fellowship aims to start technology startups within three years with the host institution. Let us tell you that this scheme was started in June 2023. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.